evening, and welcome to the Jim Bohannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at 1-866-50-JIMBO, 1-866-505-4626, although we'll be taking calls about half an hour from now. Uh, online, you'll find us at jimbohannonshow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jimbo Talks. Thank you for joining us tonight for a very special edition of the Jimbo Hannon Show, the uh, Friday, October the 14th version, which is uh, the last night I'm holding this. But the show itself, well, it must go on. That's what they say about showbiz. And so we are very delighted to spend uh, the first portion of the program tonight introducing you to the person who will be handling the hosting chores here starting Monday, October the 17th, the man you've already heard on a number of occasions earlier in the year, filling in for me, Rich Valdez. Uh, good evening, Rich. Good evening, Jimbo. It's an honor and a pleasure to be on with you, sir. Well, thank you very much. You all set to go? Uh, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. You know, uh, it's funny. I heard an interview that you did with Michael Harrison, and you mentioned how when you took over for Larry King that, you know, you felt like, hey, is anybody going to like me because they like King, and these are big shoes to fill. So I feel very similar to, to, to that sentiment. Well, you, of course, have a track record now. People have heard you, and they know that, in fact, you, uh, you've you got the goods. You uh, have the talent, and uh, you have the ability to do a superb job. Mm -hmm. Tell you. us a little bit about yourself. A lot of people out there may have heard you, but they don't really know that much uh, about uh, Rich Valdez. You bet. So, you know, my parents are born on the island of Puerto Rico, and um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, in 1978, so I'm a Gen Xer. And I, um, I grew up in Brooklyn for, you know, the first, uh, up until my teenage years. And then we came to Hudson County, New Jersey, and just across the, um, the river from, from Manhattan, really. And uh, it was a good time to be alive, honestly. And I became an entrepreneur early in my life. Uh, in my senior year of high school, I was uh, messing around, learning how to cut hair on my buddies. They were all my guinea pigs. And uh, at the time, these, these buzz cuts, you know, real short on the sides. And some people would, like, draw designs carved into the side of their hair. And it was expensive, and people would go to New York City for it. And I thought, you know, I could capitalize on this if I learned how to do it. So I did, and I started doing it in my senior year of high school. Now, actually, before that, but by my senior year of high school, I, I developed, like, a 100-person clientele. And my brother said, this is more than a hobby. You've got yourself a business. And he uh, spotted me some cash and uh, convinced me to start a business. And I ultimately left high school in my senior year. I transferred to night school so that I could go to cosmetology school during the day. And I became a barber. And I was a barber for many years. And that's kind of how I started talking because barbers talk a lot. Some barbers are quiet, but I talk a lot and learned how to deal with people. And that opened the doors to many other things in business. I opened other businesses and telecommunications and whatnot. And as a business owner, that's how I got involved in local politics, which ultimately opened the door for the uh, governor in my state, uh, New Jersey, Governor Chris Christie at the time. He um, was looking for somebody to run his office of faith-based affairs, and they interviewed me for the job. And it was, um, you know, an honor to be considered, but it, it just it didn't meet my needs. I was married, I had two children, and I couldn't do it. But they called me back for a, a different opportunity, and I served in that administration for a couple of years. And once um, I wrapped up my service in state government, I, I always wanted to get into media but didn't really have the in. But I had an opportunity to write for the Washington Times, so I wrote a column with the Washington Times community section for a little bit and um, opened up more doors. And I met with James O'Keefe at Project Veritas and uh, did some amazing work with him. And um, the rest is history. I ended up on radio, and here I am. Wow, that, that's a, a roundabout trip. I must say that's a, that's a remarkable tale. I've talked to a lot of people about how they got into this business, but I don't think that uh, cosmetology ever entered into it before tonight. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, do you remember the first moment you said to yourself, radio, hmm, there might be something there? A hundred percent. So, you know, uh, it's a, there's a two-part story. The first part of it is when it, when it happened to me, uh, I first discovered talk radio because back in the days there wasn't GPS. And when my, my oldest daughter was uh, just a little girl, I was dropping her off at daycare, and I had to go to a meeting, a work meeting that was off-site. So I had printed my directions from MapQuest. That was a thing that we did back in the days. Oh, yeah. and, I would, and I would turn on 
uh, 10, 10 wins to hear the traffic. And I did that, but I landed on the wrong station. And I heard some uh, conservative talk on WABC in New York City. And it was extremely stimulating talk. And I said, man, this is great. I can't believe I've never listened to this before. I had always listened to, to um, music in the morning. And I was hooked on it from, from the instant I listened to it. So I became a, a talk radio junkie in my early 20s. Uh, now, fast forward to uh, my late 20s when I was working with a college in New Jersey. And the uh, president of the college, uh, I was the marketing director, and the president of the college was the... Uh, for all effect, we're going to say he was the pitch man, right? And he voiced all of the commercials for the school. But he was on a, a trip to Argentina, and they had to do a bunch of spots, and uh, I couldn't get in touch with them. They said, well, somebody's got to do it. It's going to have to be you. I said, I've never done that before. And they said, it's not that hard. Just let's go. So they, they threw me in the studio, <laughs> and I started reading this ad copy. And, you know, the guy looks at me, the engineer, and he says, no, no, no. It's, it's not going to – you've got to flail your arms around a little bit and, you know, really use your pipes and really get into it. And uh, so I did, and I said, man, this is fun. I can't believe people get paid to do this stuff. <laughs> and that was when I got bit by the bug. And I said, man, the sound of my voice going through the headphones, through the microphone, it was kind of like playing with a walkie-talkie as a little kid. And uh, I felt like a kid in a candy store. That was 2009 on WAWZ in New Jersey. And uh, that was I did that for a couple of years, just voicing those ads. And when um, for, there was a brief period where my parents became ill, and they both went to be with the Lord after that, and I, I spent some time taking care of each of them. And w when that was done, I, I had to, for, for two years, I actually stopped working, and I lived off of savings. And uh, I was at, at a fast food place with my friends, and I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. Do I go back into government? Do I go back into, like, higher ed administration? That's really where I'd spent most of my career. And one of them said, you know, you always said you wanted to get into radio. Why don't you do that? And I said, well, that's like people who say they want to go to the NFL. You don't just get into radio. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of find you, you know. And everybody I ever, like, uh, informally interviewed, I'd say, yeah, how'd you get into radio? They all had the same story. Oh, I was 14. I was 16. I would sweep up in the, you know, I, I did what I had to do to, to get on the air. I, I worked for free. I did the, and, you know, I was here in, in my 30s, and it just, it wasn't going to work. Uh, but... One of my friends said, look, you worked in politics. You have a lot of connections. You know a lot of people. Why don't you give it a shot? And I thought to myself, all right, you know what? I'm going to take you up on that. So I did a little networking, and uh, somebody had sent somebody uh, uh, an email with a job uh, posting for a producer opportunity on the Mark Levin show. And I happened to have listened to Levin for many years when I worked in Trenton. And it was, you know, on at the time I was driving home. So I, uh, I connected with them. We all liked each other. They, they happened to be looking for somebody that worked in media or had some media background, but they didn't want a radio person uh, to, to produce this, the live call in portion and do the call screening because they felt that they didn't have a grasp on politics if they were from radio. That was the philosophy. And I said, well, I'm not from radio, but I do like radio. And uh, I worked there for a while, and before too long, we were housed out of WABC at the time in New York City. Um, some folks there said, you should have a podcast. I said, I don't even know what a podcast is. What is a podcast? <laughs> and they explained it to me, and I said, all right, hey, listen, you, you, you help me, and I'll do it. And it just so happened to be that a wonderful guy named Chris Libertini, he was the uh, imaging guy and the um, director of production for the Howard Stern Show, and he had just come to WABC a short while earlier. And he said, you know, I'll help you out with some imaging. We'll create a show idea for you. You can make a demo. They brought me over to the people at Cumulus for podcasts. They said, yeah, let's give it a shot. I started that show. It went well. And uh, before I knew it, they were saying, hey, do you think you could do a fill-in because so-and-so is going to be out for this holiday or that holiday? And I said, are you kidding me? You know, I didn't tell them out loud. But I was like, I would do this stuff for free. I love it. So uh, I, I did, and I just I adore radio, in particular talk radio, in particular some of the greats, yourself included, that, that you know, have spent decades on the air. And I'm talking about Bob Grant, who was local in my area. Just the, oh, yeah. these, uh, these great personalities that really – brought so much to the table when it came to radio. And uh, I, I was bit by the bug, and I did as much fill-in work as I could until I got my own show on WABC, and that went well. And then I signed a new deal with a different network, and I ended up on WPHT in Philly, another 50,000-watt uh, station in a top market. And I just I, I loved the business. I loved the industry. I loved the callers. And I just loved this craft. Ah, uh, well... That, and, and not once did he sweep a broom at the age of 14. 
So, <laughs> what can I tell you? We're going to come back and we'll talk some more with uh, the person who will be hosting this program uh, weeknights at uh, 10 p.m. till 1 a.m. Eastern Time, starting on Monday, October the 17th, Rich Valdez. And we'll continue with more on the Jim Bohannon Show, final edition for me, after these messages.